All right, welcome to Photoshop is Fun. Today we're gonna to talk about catch lights and the importance of catch lights in um, portrait photography. So catch lights are really the crown jewel of any good photograph. They're the thing that makes um, a person's um, uh, you know, a person's image look like um, the subject has come to life or has a sparkle in their eye. And if you don't know what a catch light is, essentially it's just a photography term, and it means the reflection that you get off of your light source. Um, so when that thing, um, you know, blasts out its light and it hits the um, subject's eyes and reflects back, it gets captured in your photograph, and it really gives a nice look to an image. And you can see in this particular image. Um, this guy's got a catch light in the 3 to 11 o'clock position. It expands across that on each eye. It's relatively uniform, etc. And it gives us, um, this picture a nice, um, beautiful look to it. All right, let's go ahead and build our own catch light. And we'll, we'll kind of customize it so that it has, um, uh, it has our kind of signature look to it. And to do that, I want to start with a natural catch light. I don't want to start with one that was already created in Photoshop and, and built there. I want one that actually came from a real light source, some kind of strobe light source, and I'll use that as the template. Now, just let me say real quick, you might like a variety of catch lights. You might want a hexagon strobe, etc. Um, that's perfectly fine. Build whatever you want. Use it in your photography, whatever works for you, whatever um, provides the, um, the look and feel that you want in your photography. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this left eye, her left eye, and I'm going to um, build my catch light based off this template. Now I'm not going to do it perfect because I want mine to have its own character. I don't want it to be a perfect carbon copy of this. Um, if that's your preference, you certainly can. It's easy to do. We're going to do all this with the pen tool. Um, so you can do it as perfect as you'd like or just, you know, kind of slightly off um, so that the, um, the spirit is still there and, and the accuracy of the... Um, of the contours, uh, but so that it still also has its own kind of flavor that is specific to you. So I've selected the pen tool, and you can do that by clicking um, P on your keyboard or just go ahead and select it over here. If you were to hold um, or to mouse click on your um, pen tool icon, you'll see there's a suite of other things uh, within the um, pen tool family that you can use, but we just want the top one for what we're doing. The other thing is you want to make sure that. Um, uh, the paths icon up here is selected and then also the pen tool okay so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna just start with a single click on this corner and next we're gonna go ahead and click but on this click we're gonna hold it and we're gonna drag straight down and that's gonna give us a little bit of curve and that's the curve we want for this top part of the um, of the catch light and now we're gonna do that one more time where we click and hold down on this corner and I am going to drag this it's gonna be kind of a long drag and then we're gonna move over to about the five o'clock position so we just have a little bit of a bend I want it to be a little more dramatic than what's in this um, particular photograph um, but you can kind of do it to your own taste now here's the trick uh, before we get to the third um, click we need to get rid of this anchor arm and to do that we're gonna go ahead and hold down the alt key and then click right here on that point. And that'll get rid of it. And now we can move on to the, um, the third click, or the fourth click, I guess. And we do that by holding down uh, the left mouse key and then also dragging straight down just a tad. I want just a little bit of an um, inner curve right there. And then we also need to hold down the Alt key on this one and click in the center. And then finally what we're going to do is we are going to click where we started and you can see that as I put the icon, hover the icon over that spot, the little circle shows up next to the pen tool icon and that's how you know you're about to close your shape. And I'm going to click and hold and I am going to um, just drag just a little bit, maybe something like that. I want a little bit of a little bit more drama in my uh, particular catch light um, than than this one, but um, you get the idea. So now what we want to do is create a new layer, and then we want to again with the pen tool selected, we want to right click in that shape that we just made, and we want to say fill path, and we want to fill this with um, white, and in this case uh, that's my foreground color, so I'll just leave it on foreground color. But if I needed to do white, I would just uh, click this menu and go down to color and, and select white. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And now I've created my shape. And the only thing I, that's left to do is just to add it to the shape library. So now I have this vector shape that I can scale to any size without losing fidelity. Um, and it's going to be reusable for all of my future photographs. So I need to right click on it and say define custom shape. So I'm just going to call this catch light. demo and click OK. Now when I switch back to the other image I'm gonna get rid of the catch light that I added and you'll you'll see how flat his eyes become without it. And I'm gonna build or add back the catch light um, using the template that we just built. So if I zoom in on his eyes and I'll start with the left and then select the um, custom tool custom shape tool down here and then go up here I can find that new custom shape which is right here catch light demo I can select it and I can um, click and get any size vector object shaped in that um, catch light and in this case and I can also invert it too for the other eye I can flip it to this way and then you can obviously do a vertical inversion as well so for this eye, I'm just going to make it something like that. And my foreground color is white, so the catch light will also be white. And I'm going to position it um, a little right around the um, right around the nine o'clock position. And just so you know, um, I don't think there's really a standard on this, but um, catch lights generally um, in studio and what I've seen um, out in the field generally um, fall within the nine to three o'clock position so anywhere in here you just kinda play around see what you like what works for your photography and um, go with it now on the other eye I know this looks ridiculous it's too white um, we'll deal with that in just a minute I want to create both catch lights so I'm gonna click back on the shape tool the custom shape tool I still have the catch light selected and this time I'm going the other way um, so I'm going to drag to the left instead of the right and there's the catch light for that I'm gonna um, click on the selection tool and I am going to back out a little bit so that I can kinda get a better idea of what it is that um, that the final product will be uh, with these catch lights so what I want to do is I basically want to rasterize these um, these vector images I know I have the right shapes I have the right size etc so I'm ready to go ahead and start working with these and blending them back into the um, image um, I can right click on it and say uh, rasterize layer or I can just jump to what I want to do which is um, basically uh, add a Gaussian blur to these um, catch lights and that'll help them blend back into the eye I'm gonna go ahead and say okay it's telling me that it has to rasterize it and generally um, your radius on these is going to be either one or one and a half um, not really much beyond that and in some instances you know again whatever your style is but generally speaking it's about one one and a half so I'm gonna go ahead and do one and it'll apply the Gaussian blur and on the other one I'm gonna do the exact same thing so I'm gonna say filter Gaussian blur it'll have the same settings as the previous one and of course it still looks a little ridiculous and what I want to do is um, I'm gonna go ahead and combine these um, two layers um, uh, shape 2 and shape 1 because I've already positioned my catch lights I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna need to move them and then I have a, a backup way to move them if I need to because they're so well separated um, but I'll, I'll find working with them a little bit easier if they're on the same layer so I'm gonna say control W or you could go um, merge down or it's control E sorry and now I have um, my catch lights on one layer so now what I want to do is I basically want to blend them back into the image so I'm gonna zoom out one more and um, you'll blend it back in basically with the opacity and typically I'll bring the opacity somewhere between 40 and 50 percent um, again it just varies on the photograph um, so you got to get yours where you want them and where they look more natural and when you know that um, a catch light has been added, uh, you've, you've just seen the um, version of it with, without it on, it's a little more noticeable to see the catch light. So you do have to um, possibly you know, look at this a little bit later um, after you've applied it to make sure it still looks natural and whatnot. But I always notice for me that I'm a little more sensitive to the catch light when I'm in post-processing. So 
I often will go back and um, look at them just to make sure. But to me, that looks pretty natural. Um, I might play with it a little bit more, but we'll go ahead and keep it at, um, let's just say, at even 40%. For now and in a nutshell that's how you do catch lights um, you know create your own custom shape catch light get out there do it yourself and um, uh, have a great time with your photography